hopped aboard what they call a train to a country that really was number one in education. Finland is ranked at or near the top of having the best educated students in the world, which left everyone wondering, really, Finland? These are the people who gave us the Air Guitar Championship and the sports of cell phone throwing and wife carrying. These are the geniuses that cracked the code to good education? I mean, how is it that the kids in Finland are ahead of the rest of the world? So here's what happened. Back in the day, Finland schools sucked on the level that ours suck on. When they tested the world's kids, both Finland and us were usually about the same, you know, somewhere down the list of nations. But Finland didn't like that. So they tried some new ideas, and in no time, Finland shot to the top of the world. Their students were number one. How did they do that? That was the one question I wanted an answer to, and I went straight to see the enemy's minister of education. Before I could say anything, she blurted out their top secret. They do not have homework. Wait, so you reduce the homework you give yes. them at school? Yes. They should have more time to be kids, to be youngsters, to, to enjoy the life. How many hours of homework did you get last night? Um, about 10 minutes or something. 10 minutes of homework. Yeah. yeah. Wait, maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes. 20 minutes, but not 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Well, if I would have done the homework, uh, I, I think it would be like 10 minutes tops. Usually I don't really do homework that much. <laughs> the whole term, homework, uh, is kind of obsolete, I think. In that way... That Home, your homework is obsolete? Yeah, yeah. In that way that uh, these kids, they have a lot other things to do after school. Like what? Uh, like, like being together, like being with a family, uh, like uh, doing sports, like playing music, like reading. So they have no homework. What, what if all they want to do is climb a tree? They could climb a tree, yeah. They can climb, climb a tree, then they learn how to climb a tree. But they'll end up, while climbing the tree, probably finding out about different insects, and they can come to school next day telling me about what they found. Compared to the older kids, how many hours a day did the younger ones go to school? Um, Monday's three hours. Tuesdays, four hours. It varies. It's 20 hours a week. So they're, oh man. Now, does this three or four hours at school include the lunch hour? Yes. How are they learning anything? How are you getting anything done? Your brain has to, it has to relax every now and then. If you just constantly work, 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 then you stop learning. And there's no use of doing that for a longer period of time. Finland students have the shortest school days and the shortest school years in the entire Western world. They do better by going to school less. Yay! Uh, how many languages do you speak? English, yeah, Swedish, uh, Spanish. Finnish and Swedish. Finnish, English and German. French, German. Finnish and English. English, Swedish and French and Spanish. So you were an exchange student in the U.S.? Yeah. When you got back here in school, what did you notice that you felt relieved about? Uh, no more multiple choice exams. They No multiple choice exams here? Or, or, or very few of them, if any. Because really? they, all of my exams in the U.S. How do you answer the question right if it isn't listed as one of the four choices? <laughs> you write your answer. It. You have to know it, actually. Yeah. You actually have to know it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if there was one thing I heard over and over again from the Finns, it was that America should stop teaching to a standardized test. Get rid of those uh, standardized tests. National testing. The standardized tests. A standardized testing. What you are teaching your students is to do well on those tests and you're not really teaching them anything. No, we are teaching them. We're teaching them how to flunk a test and then a bunch of schools fail the test and those schools are turned into charter schools and then somebody makes a lot of money. But school is about finding your happiness, finding what, you know, finding a way to learn what makes you happy. 
They figure now about one third of the school time, the students are in school, is spent preparing for the standardized test. Mm -hmm. And so they've eliminated a lot of things that aren't on the test. So music is gone, art is gone, poetry is gone. gone. Yeah, in many schools. Civics isn't even on the test. So now schools are driving. Really? Civics, yes. Civics, American civics. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. We got rid of poetry. Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Why? It's a waste of time. When are they ever going to learn? When are they ever going to speak as poets when they're adults? How does that help them get a job? We try to teach them everything that they need so that they could actually use their brain as well as they can, including PE, including arts, including music, anything that can actually make brain work better. The children need to be baking, they should be singing, they should be doing art and going on nature walks and doing all these things because there's this very short time that they're allowed to be children. <laughs> If you don't have standardized tests here in Finland, uh, how do you know which schools are the best? And, you know, people need a list. The neighborhood school is the best school. It is not different that, than the school which can be, for example, situated in the town center, because all the schools in Finland, they are all equal. When we move to a new city, we never ask where the best school is. It's never a question. So nobody has to shop for schools. There's nothing different in any of our schools. They are the same. It is illegal in Finland to set up a school and charge tuition. That's why, for the most part, private schools don't exist. And what that means is that the rich parents have to make sure that the public schools are great. And by making the rich kids go to school with everyone else, they grow up with those other kids as friends. And when they become wealthy adults, they have to think twice before they screw them over. In the United States, education is a business. There are corporations making money. Here, it's so student-centered that when we had to redo our playground, they had the architects come in and talk to the kids. For were, the they, were they listened to? Yes. Yes, there are things on our playground that the students really wanted. Being in school here is more independent. We were created more like adults than in the United States. Yeah. I mean, we don't need a whole pass to go to the bathroom during class. Yeah. yeah. We'll see students commuting on, on the subway, uh, even as young as seven and eight, going on their own to school. When I started doing teacher training practice back in the U.S., I, I was in these certain neighborhoods teaching these kids and telling them you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. This is kind of a lie. And when I came to Finland, a lot of my teaching is based on what the kids want and what they see for their future. So it, it doesn't feel so false to say you can really be whatever you want to be when you grow up because they're making it happen already, they already have such power. <laughs> That's upsetting to think about that, mm. that our kids don't have that. Mm. That's really beautiful. It's not that we have figured out something that nobody else has done in education. That's wrong. Many of these things that have made Finland perform well in education are initially American ideas. We try to teach them to think for themselves and to be critical to what they're learning. We try to teach them to be happy person, to be respect others and respect yourself. You're concerned with their happiness? Oh yeah. What the hell do you teach? <laughs> I teach math. So the math teacher says that the, the, the first thing out of your mouth of what you wanted these students to get out of school was to, was to be happy, to have a happy life. Yeah. And you're the math teacher. Yeah. When do they have their time to play and socialize with their friends and grow as human beings? Because there's so much more life around than just school. You want them to play? I want, I want children to play. 
And that was the principle. I'm planting the American flag right here in the middle of your school and claiming this great idea for us. Thanks for stealing it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how we roll. All right. I'm just saying. So after getting a great K through 12 education, where do you go next? Deep in the heart of the eastern slopes of the Alps is the home of Rapunzel and Sleeping Beauty. Slovenia, not Slovakia, Slovenia. Actually, much of Slovenia's mail gets missent to Slovakia, but that's not why I'm here. Slovenia is a magical fairyland, home to the rarest of mythical creatures. A college student with no debt. How much debt do you have here being a student? None. <laughs> None? It's free. Slovenia is one of dozens of countries where it is essentially free to go to university. Do you have any debts? No. Do you know what I mean by debt? Mm, not really. No, that that is um, is when you owe other people a whole lot of money. No, no <laughs> we don't have any. We don't have. No. 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 Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I did find one student with debt. I actually moved here four years ago to finish my education because I couldn't afford to go to CU Boulder anymore. Col really? University of Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. I still owe the government like seven thousand. So what do you pay here now? I'm, I don't pay anything. Nothing? No. You're an American? Why did you decide to come here? I couldn't even afford to finish community college. Uh, so then I found out the situation in Slovenia. I'd never heard anything like that before. School did you even know so where cheap. Slovenia was? No, I had no idea right. where Slovenia was. Yeah, but seriously, what, what kind of education are you getting here? It's miles better. Really? Yeah, really? It's, it's not even comparable. It's like high school here is more difficult than American... Uh, undergraduate work. Uh, how do you say in Slovenian? Any American student can come here and go to university for free. Ah, rad bi šel brez plačno izobrazovanje. Wait a minute, slow, slow. Rad bi, rad bi imel brez plačno izobrazovanje. Rad bi imel brez plačno izobrazovanje. Do you use the regular alphabet here? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We, we, do, we, we have 25 characters. We have 26, right? Well, that's, yeah. Which one did you cut out? Ah, w, we don't have that. Did you cut out W while Bush was president, or <laughs> was that before? I'm just curious. It's not, it's from the beginning. Please. It's from the beginning. It has nothing to do with Bush. Nothing. Okay, all right. Luckily, the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia offers nearly 100 courses of study that are taught in English. Why do they do that? You're, you're a foreigner. I mean, it's, their tax dollars are paying for you. Well, I think the thing is that here is education is really seen as something that's really a public good and the issue is once you start charging foreign students for education you automatically open up the idea that you can charge everyone and as soon as anyone starts paying tuition the entire idea of free university for everyone is under threat that changes the nature of school being a public good a while back the government of Slovenia decided it was time to start charging students tuition that sent a shockwave through the country, and the students responded. We organized a, a, a protest against that uh, law. We spent nine months meeting with the Minister for Education, with the heads of the universities. We managed to delay the law for long enough uh, for the government to eventually collapse. Wait a minute. An organization that's got 40 to 50 active members. It, yes. And you help to bring down the government. That's right. That's right. And force a new election. That's right. <laughs> that's amazing. That's an amazing story. Here's what students do when the government tries to fleece them in countries like Canada, Germany, France, Finland, and Norway. And here's what happens each time there's a tuition hike in the U.S. I would like to give you a small present to memorize oh, your oh, visit thank you. to university. Here is a very strong tradition of lace making. 
of lace making? Lace making, but this is a la metal lace. No man has ever given me a gift of lace before, so <laughs> I thank you for this. The idea of making college free and not sending 22-year-olds into a debtor's prison was something I could definitely take back to the United States. I asked for a meeting with the president of Slovenia, and strangely enough, they gave me one. How are you today? Thank you. The president was happy to meet with me, but he ordered my crew out of the room because he did not want any witnesses to his surrender. See how easy that was? Success. No casualties, no PTSD, no Dick Cheney. Just me walking away with something better than oil. I have just met with the uh, president of Slovakia, <laughs> and uh, he has surrendered to the United States. I have invaded your country, essentially, to take this incredible idea that all college should be free for everyone. Thank you.